<laughs> I grew up in the town of Shiprock, New Mexico. My grandfather was a tribal medicine man. I'd been off at a boarding school a few towns over at this time, but visited my family's modest desert home every weekend. It was during one of those visits that one evening I heard the dogs relentlessly barking outside at something. After a few moments of this, something made a thud on the roof of the house, as if something very large had jumped up there. As my sisters cowered under the covers, I went to go wake my parents. They told me it was just a cat and that I should go back to bed. I did, but soon I could hear it thumping about on the roof over my room and I could even make out the scratching of claws and heavy breathing. The dogs were barking and running around the house as it walked back and forth, and at once, it stopped. Everything was quiet. Suddenly, I heard one of the dogs whimper, as if it had been hurt. Then the footsteps started up again. I could tell it wasn't a dog or cat. It was a human, someone heavy, walking on two legs. I fell asleep as I was listening. The next morning, I checked the area. There were weird footprints. I tried to tell my parents, but they just brushed it off. No one paid attention. The prints weren't very clear because the ground was too hard. Since no one was listening, I just dropped it. Within four days, my cousin passed away. She was only 25 years old. She lived on the north side of the house. Before she passed on, on Sunday afternoon, she had mentioned a bad headache. That was the last time I heard her talking about the pain. After she passed on, my family brought in a medicine man and he conducted a ceremony. He said, two of you know about it. Everyone looked at me and my sister. We had never told our story to anyone. He said, it's a man in a bearskin, and I saw he was on the roof of the house. When he walked on the roof, he was using a white powder, and he blew it over her. He walked round and round and round, and blew it on everyone to put you all in a deep sleep. He had a helper. It was a hummingbird. He blew this white powder on her, and that's how she passed away. Then he explained, I see lights, the light traveling toward your house. It was like a bright flashlight, not a spotlight. The medicine man said, that is it. It is that light. He conducted the prayers and chanted songs. He prayed using sacred words, words I'd never heard. He took out fire ashes and arrowheads to ward off the skinwalker. After singing and praying for several hours, the light suddenly disappeared. At the time, I didn't fully understand what he meant by white powder. But later my grandma told me that white powder is crushed human bone, which they get from the graveyard. One night, my brothers and I were home alone when our dogs began making a ruckus outside. We tried to ignore it, thinking the dogs had just gotten riled up by coyotes or some other wild animal, but they wouldn't stop barking. Finally, we managed to get to sleep. I woke up in the middle of the night having to use the bathroom, which meant I had to go to the outhouse outside. My brother joined me. We picked up some flashlights and headed out into the night. The dogs suddenly began barking again, and I shined my flashlight out into the darkness. All of a sudden, there was a very loud whine from one of the dogs. Then everything went quiet again. It was really too quiet for that time of year. Not even the sheep were making noise. Then, out of nowhere, I heard a few of the dogs going completely mad by the truck. When I looked over, there was this man. He was unbelievably tall leaning one arm on the cab roof of the truck. He was looking at the dogs for a little, and then suddenly, he kicked one of them. 
They all scattered in different directions. This thing looked up at me and I saw its face. It had a pure white face, like a full moon, two burning red eyes, and a slight smile that was pure black. I couldn't move or make a sound. It began walking toward me with long strides until it finally towered over me. All I could see was a dark red, like the color of the blood when you cut the throat of a sheep. I kept getting deeper and deeper into its eyes. I could faintly hear my brother coming out of the outhouse. With this, the thing looked up at him. Reality came rushing back to me. I noticed that my brother was too distracted with his buckle to realize what was going on. I also noticed this thing's long hands hovering just inches from my head. Its skin was black ash, and it smelled like a bloated dead animal in summer. I was still unable to move or speak. The skinwalker began to move toward my brother. Finally, noticing this figure, my brother became as paralyzed as I was. The thing drew closer and closer, reaching an arm out toward my brother's head. Something finally snapped in me. I became unbearably angry. I broke from the trance and lunged at the skinwalker, raising my arms like a wild animal and baring my teeth at it. A growl came out that I never knew I could make. I became more and more angry at this thing for trying to hurt us. It kept that smile at first, but the angrier I got, the more the smile faded. Finally, with everything I had, I began to make this primal roar at it. It fell backwards and ran away into the night. Looking back at me, its eyes were dim and dull, its smile now long since gone. The next morning, my family returned home from the feast. After relaying the story to my parents, they quickly hired a medicine man. My family and I live in a rural community on the Navajo Reservation. My aunt and her two brothers were home alone while my grandparents had left for the evening to attend a chapter house meeting. They were in the house, and like many people from the reservation, they didn't have electricity. It had been dark outside for about an hour, and my aunt and uncles were getting ready for bed. Outside they began to hear noises, as if someone was moving things around. My oldest uncle went to look out the front window and saw a figure out by the truck. This was immensely out of the ordinary because the closest neighbor was miles away. Whatever it was, it opened the truck door and began to dig through the personal items my family had left in the vehicle. My aunt and uncles were frightened by the sight and knew they should take action. They took out a rifle and all steadied themselves to hold it up. They flung open the door and aimed the gun at the dark figure. The figure turned and started to walk towards them totally unfazed by the weapon. My uncle pulled the trigger, but nothing happened. The figure drew closer, and my aunt began to smell something like a rotting corpse. It was so strong, it made her gag. My uncle continued to pull the trigger with no luck, and the figure came closer and closer. Off in the distance, headlights were coming up the road. My grandparents were returning. The figure looked toward the lights and started to move away and tucked itself behind a tree near the house. My oldest uncle ran toward the truck with the gun. My grandfather got out of the car and my uncle pointed to the tree. The thing was poking its head out to observe what they were doing. My grandfather ran into the house and went over to the stove and grabbed a handful of ashes. He rubbed them over the gun and placed an ash-covered bullet into the chamber. He walked out onto the porch and fired toward the tree. Whatever that thing was, it didn't expect the gun to go off. The gun shot echoed, and the dark figure began running. My grandma and aunt ran inside, and my uncles and grandfather chased after it. There weren't many roads or paths, so as they chased after the figure, the truck was bouncing, and the headlights weren't fixed on one particular spot. My uncle swears that whenever the headlights would hit the figure, he saw a woman. Not only that, 
Whoever it was, they were running on all fours, like a bear. My grandfather eventually stopped the truck, and as they neared the ditch that drops about 20 feet, he got out and began to yell in Navajo. My uncle says that he was yelling about a local woman. He yelled that he wasn't scared and that he knew it was her, and to leave his family alone. A few days passed, and there was news that the woman that my grandfather was yelling about had passed. I've always been told that if you know who a skinwalker is, say their name, and it'll kill them. This took place in 1993, when I was a security guard at a small hotel in Taos, New Mexico. On this particular evening, I had been working the graveyard shift, patrolling in my car around the hotel grounds, and I decided to park and take a nap. It was after midnight, close to 2 a.m., and I was in my car. I parked under a tree, and I guess I semi-drifted off. Suddenly, something struck the bottom of my car with enough force to make it sway. This car was a rather heavy 1978 Thunderbird. I started the car and pulled forward, turning around in the lot. Sitting where I'd been parked was a dog-like thing with an odd face staring me down. I felt a dark energy about it, like it was invading my soul. It had human features, especially the eyes. They had that spark of human, but they were wholly evil. Its face didn't have a long snout. It looked like a human nose, a bit extended, but not black tipped like a dog. As for size and body, it was a bit bigger than an adult German Shepherd. Its fur was rather mangy and dirty looking black and tan. It was thickly muscled. Looking at this thing gave me that feeling of fear instinctively when you know you're in big danger. I hit the gas and tried to hit it with my car. It ran off the property onto native land across the road. It then ran back across onto the hotel property. I chased after it and it ran into a third parking lot. It then ran into an area called the ponds, where the weeds grow about eight to nine feet tall. There were two large cesspools there, and the area was really weed filled. I parked and grabbed my pistol and ran on foot after it. I could hear it moving through the weeds. It was circling, trying to come up from behind me. Then it rushed and threw me aside like I was built of matchsticks. I felt around and found my pistol, and again chased after it. Though it ran in on four legs, it ran back out on two. It looked like a shambling, nude, man-like thing, and it screamed as it fled. The scream was both human and animal. It was horrifying. The thing ran across an area that had sagebrush and cactus, in the direction of some houses, so I couldn't risk a shot at it. The native housekeeping crew at the hotel told me that I had certainly met up with a skinwalker. I was also plagued by bad luck, nightmares, and health problems after this, possibly related to the encounter. It got to the point where I actually sought out a native shaman to cleanse me with a ritual and sacred smoke. As to why the skinwalker came for me in the first place, I believe it had been stalking me for weeks, or even months, for reasons unknown. The shaman gave me a spirit protector in the form of a white wolf, which has managed to break the spell of the skinwalker, dispelling the nightmares and allowing my health to stabilize. 